Legend has it that there was a doll maker whose soul was lost to time and void. In his final moments on this earth, before being reclaimed by the great old ones, he was compelled to create a doll of endless curses. This doll was modeled in form of the damned, with arcane glow-in-the-dark energies, cloth as soft as new and unscathed flesh, and is super cuddly, perfect for any Halloween night listening to non-stop horror radio or creepypasta stories. And what happened to this artifact of dark and evil magics, you asked? Well, it's available now, from Makeship, but only until October 21st. Get yours now while you can, until it returns to the Earth and is lost forever. I could see that Vanessa Barnes was under great duress when she first visited my office. The young woman had bags under her eyes. Her hair was tousled and unkempt. She was having difficulty following our conversation. When was the last time you had a full night's sleep? I asked her. She glanced away and bit her bottom lip, carefully contemplating her answer as though it was the million dollar question on some network game show. Two days. It's been two days, and I'm so tired. But I can't go back to sleep. I've been working as a sleep physician for 22 years, and in that time I've encountered hundreds of patients suffering from insomnia. Vanessa exhibited all the textbook symptoms. Fatigue, anxiety, difficulty paying attention. But her file said she was suffering from another disorder. Sleep paralysis. The condition is not as uncommon as you may think. Approximately 7.5% of the population experience episodes at some point in their life, and I myself have treated dozens of cases. Sleep paralysis typically occurs when the mind wakes before the body does. Think of the brain as having millions of light bulbs, all connected to on-off sleep switches. Normally, when we wake, the light bulbs are all switched on simultaneously. But in instances of sleep paralysis, there are misfires. And so only half the lights come on, rendering those people suffering from the disorder in a strange state of half-sleep. This can lead to a whole host of peculiar symptoms. During one of those episodes, people experience horrible, realistic nightmares, where they feel like they're awake in their bed but can't move their body. Hallucinations are also common such as the sensation that something is sitting on top of your chest, or that someone is in their bedroom. This is often accompanied by an ominous feeling of impending doom or danger. Episodes can last a few minutes at a time and usually end when the other light bulbs are finally switched on, and the person is able to fully wake. While the condition can't cause physical harm to those who suffer from it, it can oftentimes cause emotional distress. The things are beginning to make sense. Vanessa Barnes wasn't having trouble falling asleep. She was simply not allowing herself to. She had kept herself awake for the past 48 hours after a particularly nasty bout of sleep paralysis, which explained why she was so exhausted when she was in my office during our consultation. I've been dealing with it my whole life. Ever since I was a teenager, but it happens more frequently now. It's worse, too. Everything feels so real. It's always the same. I can't move. I can't breathe. There's someone in the room with me, but I can't turn my head to see who it is. They're whispering. Sometimes directly into my ear. But I have no idea what they're saying. In our following sessions, I tried to explain to Vanessa how to cope with episodes of sleep paralysis, but her bouts were growing more persistent and I could tell the young woman was still experiencing significant emotional distress. Of all the patients I've had who suffered from the condition, Vanessa's sleep disorder had taken the greatest toll on her psyche. I wanted to see her problem improve, so I got more aggressive with my treatment of her. I began to teach her lucid dreaming techniques, which I hoped would allow her to gain some awareness whenever she entered a dream state. 
I began practicing the techniques myself when I was in college and found they helped increase cognizance and control over my own subconscious mind. The treatment methods I employed with Vanessa included the keeping of a dream journal, meditation, and hypnotherapy sessions. By teaching Vanessa to become a lucid dreamer, my aim was that she would be able to recognize what was going on when she was experiencing a bout of sleep paralysis and she'd be able to wake herself up. She came to my office twice a week for two months, but even though recollections of her dreams had been steadily improving, she still experienced episodes every five days or so. I began to dive deeper during our hypnotherapy sessions in order to see if any of her past experiences may have been responsible for triggering her nightmares. Go back to the first time that you ever experienced sleep paralysis, I told her during one of our sessions. How old are you? She was completely under by this time. Only during these sessions did she ever truly seem at peace. I'm 16. I had sent her conscious back 10 years. Good. I continued. Is school giving you any anxiety? No. What about your parents? Are they having issues with you? Or with each other? No. Have you witnessed anything that upset you recently? She paused briefly before answering. Yes. Progress, I thought. Perhaps we're getting to the crux of the issue. What is it? Vanessa's voice began to tremble, and I leaned forward a bit in my chair. The video. From the email. Tell me about the video. A bizarre story began to pour out of her. And the longer I listened, the more uncomfortable I became. The email is titled... Don't look at me. And I don't know who it's from. The name of the person who sent it is one I don't recognize. It's evening. I'm home alone and bored. I just can't help myself. It's like there's something compelling me to open it. The email contains a single link. Normally, I'd be worried about a virus, but for some reason, that thought doesn't even cross my mind. It's like... I feel a strange desire to click the link, see where it takes me. Adventure. Excitement. The video is dark, but I can tell I'm looking at a middle-aged man in his bedroom. It must be hot because there's two fans blowing, and he's sleeping on top of his sheets in nothing but his boxer shorts. Books are on his nightstand. Maybe they're diaries. I can't tell what they say. Video's too grainy. It was here that I noticed Vanessa's eyes beginning to water. I postulated that whatever suppressed memory we were about to uncover had affected her very deeply. Vanessa? I said. How does this make you feel? I'm afraid. I don't know why. I'm not looking at anything scary, just a, a man sleeping. But I have this terrible feeling, like a black hole is opening up in my chest and eating me from the inside out. And what happens next? A voice begins to speak. A woman whispering. It's, it's so soft at first that I turn my speakers all the way up so I can make out the words. Don't look at me, the voice is saying. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Over and over again. Vanessa's breathing became erratic here, and I could tell that despite her being under hypnosis, she was beginning to panic. I thought about bringing her out of it, but this memory seemed too important, and I felt like if we could get to the bottom of it, we could make considerable progress. I pressed on. Who's speaking, Vanessa? The woman. Who's the woman? Please continue your story. The voice, it repeats the same words over and over again, for two, maybe three minutes, steadily getting louder each time. The man doesn't wake up, despite the fact that the voice is so loud at this point that I need to turn down my speakers. He 
He doesn't even move. The woman, she enters the frame. I feel my skin go cold. Her arms, they're so long. Why are they so long? Her fingers touch the ground. I, I can't see her face. Her hair hangs over it like black cobwebs. Her skin is pale. Snow white in contrast to the dark video. The woman is wearing a tattered nightgown, a pleated bodice pattern, the kind my grandmother used to wear to bed. But it's covered in brown stains. What are the stains? I'm afraid for the man. Wake up! I think in my head, wake up! Wake up! Can't you hear her in the room with you? Tears had begun to stream down Vanessa's face. A part of me thought that the session had gone on long enough, but something deep down inside resisted the urge to pull her out of her hypnotic state. It was as if I was learning some powerful truth that had been hidden in the dark, in the black depths of her subconscious, and just how Vanessa's curiosity had compelled her to open that link all those years ago. I had a strong desire to see her story unfold. When she comes to the camera side of the bed, I can see that her legs bend backwards like a bird. Her feet are forked, two large toes with sharp black nails at the end of them. Don't look at me, she keeps saying. Don't look at me, don't look at me! She's at the end of the bed now. She leans over the sleeping man with her long, lanky arms, pulls her hair from her face, and... I, I want to scream, but I, I can't. It's the most horrible thing I've ever seen. There's nothing human about that face, those eyes. It's as if they're staring right through the computer screen and into my soul. All of them. It repeats those words again. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Does my scream wake the man or does he finally hear her? I don't know. His arms move first and then he shifts to his side facing the woman thing. His eyes are wide, he's looking right at the thing. The creature jumps back, startled. It screams at him like it's angry that he woke up. It grabs him around the arm and for the first time I, I realize how big its hands are. He's crying, trying to twist away from it. He's a full grown man, but he can't break the thing's grasp. It pulls him free from the bed and drags him across the floor as if he's a small child. The man shouts. He begs to be let free. And even after he's out of frame, I can hear him, but... It seems as though he's being carried off somewhere far away. And then there's nothing. Silence. I'm just looking at a quiet bedroom, and all I can hear is the hiss of the fans. The video stops, and I delete the email. My experience with sleep paralysis happens that night, but I can't remember what I dreamt when I wake up in the morning. I ended our hypnotherapy session here and pulled Vanessa back into a fully conscious state. She was visibly shaken. When I asked her if she recalled anything from our session, she said she had not. But I couldn't help but feel like there was something in her eye that told me she wasn't being 100% truthful. I saw her out of my office and reminded her of her next appointment the following Monday, before instructing her to continue practicing her lucid dreaming techniques over the weekend. Vanessa would no-show her next two scheduled appointments, and when my secretary attempted to contact her, the calls went straight to voicemail. Even when I personally tried reaching out, I would not get a response. As the weeks wore on, my concern for Vanessa began to fade. I had other patients who required my professional expertise and attention, and I couldn't waste my time dwelling on a patient that didn't want to show up to her sessions. Still, thoughts of, um, thoughts of her strange story during the hypnotherapy session sometimes lingered in the back of my mind. Thoughts of that day were reignited like a bonfire two weeks ago when I received an email from her. I was at home in my study that evening, going through work emails on my laptop when I saw it. At first I thought Vanessa was finally responding to my inquiry about her missed sessions, but when I read the email's title I felt the air rush from my lungs. Don't look at me. It was just like in her story. 
The body of the email contained only a single link. And was she playing a prank on me? Was this her way of getting back at me for drudging up some twisted nightmare that had been haunting her since her teenage years? Or was her story in fact genuine? A part of me feared that it was, and I knew I simply would not get the closure I needed unless I found out for myself. Adventure. Excitement. I reached over and turned my desk lamp on. And then I clicked the link. The link opened up to a video of a bedroom. It was evening. Unlike the story Vanessa described, the camera was in night vision mode and the image was clear. But I gritted my teeth and prepared myself for whatever green hell I was about to witness. There was a woman in the bed. I looked closer and for the second time that night, I saw something that stole my breath. It was Vanessa. She was asleep. On her bedside table was her dream journal. I recognized the ribbon hanging from it that she used as a bookmark. I watched her for what felt like an eternity and recognized that she was in a state of deep sleep. A creeping dread slithered its way into my mind. I thought the video had no sound at first until I realized I hadn't plugged my headphones in. Against my better judgment, I picked up the jack and I plugged it into the port. The voice had already begun. A horrible garbled whisper that made my skin crawl. It was coming from somewhere out of the camera's line of sight. Don't look at me, he was saying. Again and again it repeated those terrible words. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. I realized then what was going on, and though I prayed this was still some elaborate prank in the pit of my stomach, I knew this was not the case. Vanessa was experiencing sleep paralysis. What if the man she had told me about in her story had been suffering from it as well? What, what, if, what if it had been the only thing keeping him safe? Please don't wake up, Vanessa. I thought to myself. For the love of God, forget everything that I taught you. If my lucid dreaming techniques ended up working, she would regain her senses, wake up, and... and then what happens? The woman thing entered the frame, and it was more heinous than anything I could have pictured when I heard Vanessa's tale. Its limbs were of hideous proportions, knuckles dragging the ground like grotesque primates, with legs longer and lankier than I had originally expected. Just as my patient had explained, its knees bent backward at an unnatural angle, the skin of which looked hard and calloused like the scales of a desert reptile. I couldn't see the face. Stringy black hair draped over it, and I prayed to God that whatever was behind it would stay hidden. Don't look at me, it continued to repeat. The woman slinked slowly around the bed, and as it did so, her long, bony fingers began to tug playfully at the covers. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. My heart was beating like a drum inside my chest. The grandfather clock in my study struck twelve, and the initial chime nearly made me jump out of my skin. The woman's voice grew louder, more tenacious, more aggressive. I thought I might go mad from the sound of it. Don't look at me! Don't look at me! Don't look at me! The woman reached the head of the bed and leaned down, parted her hair, and my mouth went dry from fright. Just as Vanessa had said, it wasn't a woman at all. Perhaps in some ways, its body bore a warped and twisted resemblance to that of a woman, but the word woman would imply that what I was looking at was human, and this thing's face was anything but that. He was covered in eyes. Hundreds of them. No, thousands of them. Eyes within eyes, all different shapes and sizes, and I felt as, as insane as this might sound, that they were watching me just as closely as they were watching Vanessa. They glowed like awful green emeralds on my computer screen. I wondered what horrible colors they were like in person. Don't look at me! Don't look at me! Don't look at me! I would have leapt up and run screaming from my house in that instant if I had not noticed Vanessa beginning to stir in her bed. God no, I thought. She's coming out of her sleep paralysis. The thing stood still as a statue, face just inches from Vanessa. 
It happened so fast, my poor girl snapped her head around, saw the creature, then jumped back with a shriek. The creature jumped back as well, as if in shock, lit out an ear-splitting shriek of its own, then lunged an arm towards Vanessa and threw the covers off of her. It gripped her around her ankles with one of its massive paws, then dragged her, kicking and screaming from the bed. Vanessa tried to free herself, but just like with the man in her story, the thing's grasp was too strong. It pulled her violently across the floor and out of frame of the camera. The video probably only ran for 30 seconds after that, but I felt like like I sat there for hours, listening to Vanessa's screams fade as if she was being dragged down an impossibly long hallway before the video cut to black. I closed my laptop after that. I went, I went straight to my mini bar and I took a, I took a pull of whiskey. It burned like fire. I nearly coughed it up, but I didn't care. I sat on my couch, cradling the bottle in my lap until the sun came up. It took an entire day to come down from the shock of what I had seen. But it wouldn't be long before the horror would return. I woke the following night unable to move my arms and legs. There was this terrible electricity in the air. It smelled of dread, of doom, of death. The sleep paralysis would not last long. My experience with lucid dreaming helped me break whatever spell had been cast over me. But even though I could move my arms and legs, the awful sense of dread had not withered. Instinctually, I remained as still as possible, and thank the Lord that I did. The voice started quietly at first, but it was even more horrendous in person than it had been on my computer screen. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's podcast. I want to tell you about one quick thing before we say goodbye for the evening, and that's going to be about the Mr. Creepypasta plush. The plush is only available for a limited time. So if you guys head over to makeship.com, then you guys are able to get this Mr. Creepypasta plush. It's super cool. It glows in the dark, which is really cool. And he's super soft and cuddly. So it's uh, makeship.com slash products slash Mr. Creepypasta hyphen plush. Or you know what's easier? Makeship.com. Uh, there you go. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who is supporting me on Patreon. If you guys have been supporting me on Patreon, or if you're considering doing so, then know that I just added in a couple of cool things for the loyalty program because I found out that I could. I had no idea that I could do that. So now, <laughs> you guys should be getting some cool things in the mail brought to you by Patreon that are pretty cool. They support the channel as well. Oh, getting to the point though, a huge thank you to patrons such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Ars, Bobby Carmen, Stephanie Butler, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, William King, Heather McDonald, Reaper61167, Alex the Sandwich, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Ness69420, Isoto Hatred, with two exclamation points, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Bartohawk764, Melancholy Corpse, Herb, Harley, Billy Morrow, Madam Skull Bunny, Sashi Suzaku, Grizzly Olsen. Pro, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weeds, Jay, Miss Xandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Pine Annie, Michael Scarborough, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Leadership, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kira the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Guy Harbor, Nina Smith, Nico Cayo, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much, so, so much, so, so, so much for being a part of the Patreon and helping me keep the lights on and helping me get exclusive stories and everything that we do on the channel here. Thank you guys so, so much for being a part of it. Thank everybody in the description and thank you guys who have stayed to this part of the video. It really means so much to me. I hope you all have a very happy Halloween and sweet dreams.